Go Toros! Yes, I just happened to have a bring it on costume lying around my house. I got it for Halloween a few years back, but I didn't wear it that year because I saw a tweet before Halloween saying, let me guess you're a gay guy and you've got to bring it on costume and you think you're so unique. Your Halloween is gonna suck. So I didn't wear it. I let the tweet affect me. I don't know why I'm not proud of it. You know, at least it's coming in handy now. Go RCH. It's time to revisit the movie franchise that made us all want to be cheerleaders. I was like seven when I first saw Bring It On, and I remember thinking, okay, high school is going to be great. Cheerleaders everywhere. I'm going to be a male cheerleader. At my high school, no one even cared about cheerleading. Like, yes, there were cheerleaders, but like they didn't even wear their uniforms in the hallways. Their whole life wasn't being a cheerleader, so it wasn't like Bring It On, which was very disappointing and traumatic. So we all know the gigantic blockbuster smash that is Bring It On, but some some people might not be aware that it was followed by five straight to DVD sequels plus one sci-fi channel horror movie. It's a whole ass universe. Forget the Marvel Cinematic Universe. We're diving into the Bring It On straight to DVD universe. We're doing it. I watched every single Bring It On movie out there. I needed to investigate. This is important and we need to discuss. So yeah, this whole video is gonna be me going through every single movie in the Bring It On world, in case I didn't make that clear. Mm -hmm. So first off, the original Bring It On came out in 2000, before anyone knew who the Kardashians are, and before John Cena started an OnlyFans. The good old days. This movie was a smash. It opened at number one in the box office, made like a hundred million dollars off a small budget. But apparently the writer tried to sell this movie to 28 places before someone bought the idea. So it just showed don't give up. Some people claim the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. But if the writer of Bring It On had followed that Pinterest quote, Kirsten Dunst wouldn't exist. She would be dead because if she wasn't in Bring It On, she would be, she wouldn't exist. So she might as well be dead is what I mean. I don't know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Her life would still be valid if she wasn't in Bring It On, but it would be less valid. We have to admit. Let's get into the original Bring It On then. Why don't we? Yay, the iconic opening dream sequence. I'm sexy. I'm cute. I'm popular to boot. Yeah. I'm bitching. Great hair. Woo. The boys all love to stare. I'm wanted. I'm hot. hot. I'm everything you're not. Uh -huh. I'm pretty. I'm cool. I dominate this school. Who am I? Just guess. Ah. Guys want to touch my chest. Ah. <laughs> Lyrics that defined an entire generation of narcissistic yet somehow still insecure individuals. I was in my basement at seven memorizing this routine. I think I might have even shown my parents parents, my, my routine once I had it all done and somehow I still had to come out 10 years later. It doesn't make sense. During this intro cheer, they all introduce themselves and I'm sure we all related to one of them more than the others. I was a Courtney boy. I'm pretty sure later in the movie, Courtney gets fingered at a football game. Why was I watching this at seven? She also gets shamed later in the movie for having a big butt. Yeah, she's got a lot to hang on to. What's the plural for butt on one person, I mean? Just the ass and massive. Big butts apparently weren't cool in 2000. And that's probably another reason why I was a Courtney person. Because people have always hated on me for that too. For having a big butt. Anyway, the legendary nightmare cheer sequence ends with Torrance, the main character, accidentally flashing everyone or something. Ah, everyone's worst nightmare. According to the YouTube comments, the producers wanted to cut this scene because they thought it was unnecessary. But the writers fought for it because this scene let the audience know that the whole movie is supposed to not be taken seriously. I'm not sure if that information is correct, but wow. Thank God they kept that scene in. I actually think if that beginning nightmare wasn't in the movie, it would have flopped. People would have hated it. Like the country would have gone into a recession. Thank God they kept it in. So yeah, the main character, she's a cheerleader. She has a gay boyfriend. He's going away to college. So she's like, oh my gosh, thank God Grindr doesn't exist yet or I would be screwed. He would be cheating on me. But this is 2000. I don't know how it works back then, maybe there were message boards, but I think the gay boyfriend isn't gonna go on them. So our main character is fine in that regard. She lives in a mansion. I swear every person in a teen movie from back then was rich. Like they were just in mansions. It's never even acknowledged that they're loaded. Okay, so some girl gets paralyzed while they're all doing a little routine. So they have to do the classic audition sequence that so many movies have, teen movies especially. No one has what it takes to join the Toros, but then the baddest chick in the universe walks in. Missy. 
She's so edgy. She was euphoria before euphoria. And the way she licks off that tattoo, first grade me was inspired. She doesn't even really F with cheerleading. I transferred from Los Angeles. Your school has no gymnastics team. This is a last resort. Like she doesn't even really want to be a Toro, but she has to, cause she has to use her gymnast skills somewhere. They put her to the test by giving her the longest list of flips to do. Front handspring, step out, round off back handspring, step out, round off back handspring, full twisted layout. <laughs> I remember being like, oh my gosh, is she gonna be able to pull this off? Oh, she's doing it. Look at her. Whoa. <laughs> For some reason, I remember this being way longer. Since Missy's so talented, the other girls get jealous and call her a lesbian slur. If we're gonna be the best, we have to have the best. Missy's the poo. So take a big breath. Oh! They don't write dialogue like that anymore. Missy also lives in a mansion because like I said, if you're in a teen movie, you're rich. Except every now and then in teen movies, they have somebody who's pretending to be rich and then it's exposed at the end that they're poor. Like remember the poor cheetah girl? She like pretended to be all bougie, but like she literally was broke. Ew! <laughs> So it turns out Missy's brother is the new guy at school who Torrance has a crush on, so she might cheat on her gay boyfriend. Ah! Drama. <laughs> Missy ends up quitting the squad, so they call her a lesbian slur again, obviously. But the reason why she quit is because the Toro's routine was stolen from the Clovers. Ah, the Clovers. Burr. It's cold in here. And then it goes into that thing. Like that was it. Also, Gabrielle Union is the main clover and she's from Nebraska. So am I. So like Nebraska, porn huskers, like woo. Since I'm also from Nebraska, I'm pretty much a clover, spiritually. Instead of admitting that they stole the routine, Torrance is like, oh wait, this is all from a curse. Do you believe in curses? I think I'm cursed. Because of the spirit stick. The spirit stick. For some reason, this whole spirit stick thing is so burned into my mind. I remember watching this and being so scared. They dropped the spirit stick, which you're not supposed to do because it has special cheerleading powers or something. And then some girl says this. The person who drops it, however, goes to Hades. What? Like, I don't want to go to Hades. I guess I already am for being gay, but like, I especially don't want to go to Hades for dropping the spirit stick, you know? Like if I go to hell for being gay, like that's one thing. But if I showed up and God was like, you dropped a spirit stick at cheer camp, you're going to hell. You're like, what? Like that would be so annoying. The whole squad is like, listen, we don't really care that the routine's stolen, like we're still gonna do it. And Missy's like, what? You guys can't do that. So Courtney has the comeback of a lifetime. I mean, we're talking about cheating here. Sorry, new girl, but nobody hit your buzzer. Whoa! I mean, how are you gonna reply to that? Keep that comeback in your back pocket. If you pull that out, you'll put anyone in their place. Like say you work for a company and you lost the company half a million dollars and somebody's like, Lucas, you lost us $500,000. You could simply say, Ben, who hit your buzzer? <laughs> Literally, everyone moves on. They're intimidated by you. A whole like psychological manipulation occurs. Missy has her little cheerleading transformation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys, I'm so embarrassed that I'm a cheerleader now. Like that's the vibe. They didn't even do a makeover montage though. Missed opportunity. They're cheering at a football game, throwing it down. For some reason, Missy's brother is there, but he's reading a book. It's like, if you don't want to be there, you could, you could have stayed home. Like, why are you going to the game but then reading a book and being mad about being there? Everyone starts to notice that Torrance is kind of cheating on her gay boyfriend who went away to college with Missy's brother. I can't believe you do that to Aaron. <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh, don't play dumb. You're having cheer sex with him. Ah, she is having cheer sex with him, uh, though. What? Then the Clovers show up and call them out in front of everyone. Go Nebraska! Just Tried to steal our bit, bit you but look you look like shit. Like shit. We're but the we're the ones, ones who are down with it. With it. Nebraska! Yes, Gabrielle Union. The romantic toothbrush scene that Ariana recreated in her music video. Who knew teeth brushing could connect two hearts? You know? Rewatching this though, like they keep spitting out water. Like I'm the type of person, like I brush my teeth, I spit out water once. Like I'll brush my teeth in and spit. Like I'm not spitting, brushing, spitting, brushing. Is that a thing? I'm gonna have to ask my dentist next time I go. So since they stole their routine from the Clovers, they hire a choreographer to get a new routine for the competition. He's a super nice guy. He body shames them all. Good general tone and musculature. 
Report those compliments to your ass before it gets so big it forms its own website. More big ass hate. Like what was with all the hate on big butts in the year 2000? Little did they know that fast forwarding two decades, people would be spending tens of thousands of dollars on plumping up their booties. How the tides change. Ah. In cheerleading, we throw people in the air and fat people don't go aside. Truer words have never been uttered. Spirit fingers! This will stick with all of us forever. We'll literally have Alzheimer's at 90 years old, dementia, and we'll be doing spirit fingers at our old folks' home. Okay, plot twist time. Torrance visits her gay boyfriend at college, and it turns out he isn't gay, because he's hooking up with a girl. Like, what? I was thrown off by that. So confused. Maybe you're not exactly boyfriend material. Time for the big competition! The best part about the Bring It On movies is seeing the routine. I'm obsessed with the cheer mixes. Like they're so ADD, like it'll be 15 seconds of a song, then boom, it'll like go to a different song, like sparks fly, it's like electricity, boom, ching, boom. <laughs> ah! <laughs> ah! <laughs> Bang. I'm gonna download an hour long cheer mix and listen to it every day for the first hour of my day. I feel like that would get my brain going in the right way. The Clovers obviously smash it. I mean, the girls from Nebraska, for God's sake. Obviously, they're gonna do good. I love how I'm somehow making a Compton High School cheerleading team about me being from Nebraska. I apologize. Um, the Toros, um, they do good, but not as good. So obviously they get in second place and Nebraska wins! Woo! Gabrielle, you did! You guys were good, I gotta say. You guys were better though. <laughs> we were, weren't we? I can't lie, we're better. You guys deserve second place, we deserve first place. I was just trying to be nice, captain to captain. Second place is the first loser. Torrance kisses Missy's brother and yay, the end. Everyone lip syncs to Hey Mickey at the end and it's a whole fun thing. I'm gonna give this one a solid A. Uh -huh. Cult classic. People will watch this in the year 2346 and still love it. Like I said, it was astronomically successful, which made them start the straight to DVD pipeline of a bunch of random sequels that feature all new characters, all new storylines, and none of it connects. <laughs> So it actually isn't like the Marvel Cinematic Universe at all because it's like a bunch of broken off universes. Like they never reference each other. Yay! I was curious why they even did all these straight to DVD sequels, but upon my research in the early 2000s and 90s, these straight to DVD sequels were an easy way for studios to make a bunch of money. Blockbuster was a thing, Redbox, like everyone was buying DVDs. Like for some reason, everyone had a giant stack of DVDs in their house. It took up so much space. With these straight to DVD sequels, the budgets were way lower lower, they didn't have to get movie stars, they didn't have to market them that much, and they made a bunch of money. The Olsen twins made like a billion dollars from their straight to DVD empire. So Bring It On went down this same path, and four years after the original movie came out, they released their first straight to DVD sequel, Bring It On Again. <laughs> I'm pretty sure at one point I watched this. I don't really have any recollection of it. It also starts with a nightmare, fever dream cheer thing. So I'm glad they're, you know, paying some homage to the original movie, but it obviously isn't as good as the first movie. She doesn't even flash the crowd. Instead, she pukes on everyone and wakes up and is like, ah! So yeah, this is the blonde main character whose character name we are not gonna bother to learn. You finally made it. You're in college. We're in college, which is, you know, a fun twist. Like, the college cheer team instead of high school like the first movie. We meet our villain, Queen Bee Tina. She's the cheer captain at this college. And on the first day of college, they do a giant routine for everyone. Like, if this is what college actually was like, I am pissed that I missed out. Please let me know in the comments below. On the first day of college, does the cheer team of the college do a whole routine for everyone? Because if so, I'm taking out some student loans today. Belly ring? No belly ring. The most 2004 line ever. Do people still pierce their belly buttons? Is it still going? Are you still piercing your belly buttons out there? They literally copy and paste the audition montage from the first movie into this sequel. For some reason, Jerry Trainer's in it. Love. It's time for the main blonde girl to audition and whatever she does here, like is she possessed? What's going on? I'm scared. Like if I was the cheer captain, I'd be like, okay, I know that's like technically gymnast moves, but you're out. For some reason it seems unhinged. Like it gives scary energy, whatever she's doing. Being on a college cheer squad is serious. And there are a bunch of requirements. Cause from here on out, you must be the bomb diggity. 
Do you got the bomb diggity or what? You need to have the bomb diggity. There's a love interest, of course, and he has some really great pickup lines. God, you look great underwater. Thanks. Like that would win any girl's heart. You look great underwater. You look great when I can't see you as well. You look great in the dark. You know when you wake up and you have boogers in your eyes, you can't really see anything? You look great in those moments, babe. Susie, how about suck it in the arm flap? Thank you. Oh my God, Monica. Time for some damage control on the ass. Oh, the minute there, I thought I was looking at a hefty bag full of chili dogs. <laughs> Wow, even in the sequel, they're hating on big asses. Is this gonna be a thing that follows us through every single Bring It On movie in the whole entire franchise, hating on big butts? You know there were people with the dump trucks watching the Bring It On movies and every time they're like, oh great, time to make me feel bad about myself again. Cause I have this giant ass, like, oh, so sad. Oh my gosh. What? There's over 680 calories in that, not to mention 35 grams of saturated fat. Monica. If you want to be the bomb diggity, you have got to act like the bomb diggity. Yeah, do you want to be the bomb diggity? Because if so, that includes not eating. You can't eat if you want to be the bomb diggity. Everyone knows that. Duh. That is the shizzle. Ugh, 2004. I just remember people saying that a lot. I was surprised to see that in 2004, men treated women with respect. Oh, Tina tells me you're a C-cup. Oh, and that's how I met your dad. Yeah, he came up to me on college campus looking handsome as ever. And he told me that he heard my breast size was a C cup. Little did he know I was a D. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was a great man. Anyway, the movie goes on. The main character quits the squad and makes her own squad. Somehow she gets a bunch of people who aren't gymnasts or cheerleaders and turns them into full blown professional athletes in two weeks. And they absolutely crush the competition. Boom! Bang! Dana! Na 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 na! Ooh! Ah. Everyone loves them. They win, Villain Girl is mad, the end. For the first straight to DVD sequel, I'll give this a C plus. It's not horrid, but it doesn't even have the girl from Nebraska in it or like any Nebraska references at all. That's what was missing. So it's a C plus. Bring It On Again was actually the last movie that the original Bring It On producers participated in. After this, the producers dipped and it's just all new writers, all new producers. Just They just ended up taking the Bring It On name and just pretty much telling AI to put it into different scenarios. Fast forward two years later in 2006, we get Bring It On, All or Nothing. Another straight to DVD classic. This stars Solange Knowles and Hayden Pantaneer. I definitely remember watching this one. Even Rihanna's in this one. Like the other two, it starts with a fever dream cheer sequence. She wakes up from the nightmare by sharding on everyone. <laughs> Actually just farting, just a fart, not a shart. I did not fart! We're not in college anymore, back to high school for this one. So it's such a virgin. I am a virgin. I'm a quarterback, babe. People expect me to score. I want my first time to be special. In the 2000s, every teen movie was hyper-focused on virginity. Is that still a thing nowadays? I feel like it isn't. Like in Euphoria, the new teen show or whatever. Do they ever mention virginity? I think they're all just on heroin. Like virginity is the least of their concerns. They're, they're doing a bunch of other stuff. So times have changed. They also body shame people in this movie, which is fun. They call this person really fat, which is weird because she literally looks normal. Pacific Vista has never had a fat cheerleader. They have her holding a bag of chips to, you know, really push the idea like this person's fat. They're eating chips. She's literally my 600 pound life. The storyline of this movie is Hayden Pantaneer is forced to move to Crenshaw Heights where Solange goes to school. It's not only Solange there, also the girl who gave her kidney to Selena Gomez goes to school there. I was surprised to see that. Like, yay, I, I'm a huge fan of her work. Every Bring It On movie needs a love interest and Hayden finds hers at Crenshaw. You got a nice ass too. Ah, I gotta say the soundtrack to this sequel is great. They've already played Halba Batgirl by Gwen Stefani, Dirty Little Secret by the All-American Rejects. I think I heard some Avril Lavigne at one point. The soundtrack is slaying, no cap. At first, Hayden's character doesn't really fit in at Crenshaw, but she ends up transforming. And she even says this to the people from her old school. So you better bring it all, white girl. Oh. 
Oh, white girl, remember when you used to be one? So I guess Hayden Pantaneer's character literally switches races. People think Nikita Dragon did it first. Nope. Hayden Pantaneer's character was way ahead of her time. Anyway, Rihanna finally comes into the movie at the end. She's hosting the cheer competition for some reason. She's taken off time from being a pop star to host a cheerleading contest. From straight to DVD sequels to being a billionaire. She did that. Rihanna! Obviously the end of the movie is Hayden with her new Crenshaw high school squad wins the competition. As the credits roll, Rihanna sings one of her songs and everyone dances. It's a great time. I'm gonna give this one a B, strictly because Rihanna's in it. Otherwise it would have been a B minus. So by this point, the Bring It On Factory really had the formula down. So just 12 months later, the next sequel comes out straight to DVD. Bring it on and it to win it. Oh my God, it's the Pretty Little Liars version because all the Pretty Little Liars people are in it. Just kidding. Just that one girl, but still. This is the Pretty Little Liars Bring It On version crossover. Tell me if I'm the only one who's ever thought this, but I've thought multiple times in my life that Ashley Benson would beat my ass if I ever met her. I've never said anything bad about her. She has no idea I exist, but I know for a fact if we made eye contact at a Target, at a CVS, she would beat my ass to the ground. She, like, she would hate me. I just get this feeling that she would destroy me with just one glance. Am I the only one? I was so excited watching this because I thought Heidi Montag was in this. Turns out that's not Heidi Montag, which really was sad to figure out. Skanks. I miss when people called each other skanks. Like, I feel like we need to bring slut shaming back into movies. The good old days. Ashley Benson dances around with an iPod Nano strapped to her arm. Ugh, I miss the iPod days. I never danced with an iPod strapped to my arm, but I feel like I did in a way through the culture, you know? Like we all did, even if we didn't. Do you know what I mean? It's just these things that are so in pop culture that we all lived it, you know? Like I was never raised by John and Kate plus eight, but I feel like I was in a way. Like if they do a documentary about John and Kate plus eight, I feel like I could be interviewed and be one of their kids because we all technically grew up in their family through the culture. You know what I mean? Since it's 2007, there's some MySpace references. Just so you know. I'm not mad anymore. I might space it all out of my system. Also, it turns out the setting of this movie is cheer camp. The cursed spirit stick returns. And the drama is Pretty Little Liars Girl has a crush on a guy from the rival squad at the camp. I cannot have an interracial relationship. The guy she has a crush on, his dad doesn't even know he's a cheerleader. He's in the cheer closet. He hasn't came out yet. And then a shark almost eats them. So someone shoots it. Oh, shark! <laughs> Is that a thing that happens in Florida a lot? Huh. Every teen movie in 2007 also had to have a gothic girl who like bites at people. It just, it, it had to be in there. This movie also has a great soundtrack. They're now dancing to an Ashley Tisdale song and then a sad moment happens and a super emotional Ali and AJ song is blaring. Ugh, I'm gonna start crying. Because Ali and AJ are sad singing in the background, they all start being vulnerable with each other. I'm a virgin. I just act that way so guys will like me. But it's really hard being slutty all the time. That it takes a lot of courage to admit. The gays on the cheer squad even start admitting they're not actually gay. I'm not gay. I like girls. A lot. I'm straight. Classic. It's now the time of the movie where the guy who's in the cheer closet comes out to his dad as being a cheerleader. I'm a cheerleader. Yes, one of those. He does it over the phone. It's very reminiscent of those two gay models or whatever who came out to their dad on the phone 10 years ago. Remember that? Art imitates life. You know, whatever the saying is. Those homosexual models were probably inspired by this scene in the movie to come out to their dad over the phone. Aw. We're at the end of a Bring It On movie, so obviously there's gonna be a performance. And a hey, hey, and a boom, boom. Ing, ing, ing. Meow. Ah, 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 ah. Brrr. They win all because of a move that Ashley Benson thinks of inspired by a roller coaster because this whole cheer camp is at Universal Studios for some reason. So there's roller coasters around, but yeah. And then it ends with Ashley Tisdale lip syncing. She wasn't even in the movie, but she lip syncs during the credits. B minus would have been a solid C if Ashley Tisdale didn't randomly appear at the last second. Society had to wait a long grueling two years for the next installment in the Bring It On straight to DVD franchise. But once 2009 rolled around, we got Bring It On, <gasps> Fight to the Finish. Starts with a cheer dream sequence, obviously. The main character is Christina Milian. Dip it low, pick it up slow. <laughs> Pop, 
Pa 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 thing. Christina Milian. I looked it up and she's also the person who sings Call Me Beep Me, the Kim Possible song. In 2009, she dominated my iPod Nano. Also, when I looked it up, she was 27 when she was in this high school cheer movie. You guys, I'm 30. Maybe there's still time for me to be in a high school cheer movie. You guys, it might not be too late. I gotta get on this now. I'm going to Hollywood, guys. Time to make my high school cheer movie dreams into a reality. You guys, I just got back from Hollywood and nobody wanted me to be in a high school cheer movie, but they did say I would be the perfect person to play a suicidal substitute teacher in a Disney show. Anyway, back to this, bring it on deep dive. This whole movie centers around Christina Milian being forced to move from East LA to Malibu. And after watching so many of these movies in a row, we already know what's gonna happen. She's gonna go to Malibu High. The girls are gonna be mean to her, but then she's gonna join the squad. She'll end up kissing some Abercrombie model. And honestly, after watching this movie, that's pretty much more or less the storyline. But there are some extra things, like she ends up moving some of her East LA friends to Malibu to join her squad there. She's like making a new squad to go against the Malibu squad or something. I don't speak Taco Bell menu. So what does that mean? They're illegal immigrants. Okay. I love how in these Bring It On movies, they're always fighting each other with cheer comebacks. And then... Like, I don't even know what that was, but it showed the haters. If you're in a Bring It On movie, you can't simply say, F you guys, I hate you guys. You have to be like, I say F to you, F to you, F to you, I'm the best. And then like someone throws you up into the air and you do a twisty thing. Someone needs to bring these little vests over t-shirts back. Not Julianne Rancic being in this, okay. Christina Milian obviously wins at the end. There's also like a dead mom storyline, which was fun. B plus because Christina Milian sang the Kim Possible theme song. After this Bring It On movie, I don't know what was going on, but we had to wait almost a whole decade for the next installment in the Bring It On straight to DVD franchise. It was a long eight years, I'll tell you that much. Depression started rising, anxiety was higher than it ever had been, parents were getting divorced, but then it all got cured. In 2017, when Bring It On Worldwide Cheer Smack was released. I had no idea this ever happened. I feel like if there's a new Bring It On movie and I don't know about it, something really bad happened. Like how didn't it hit my Twitter algorithm? Like I'm the person who they should be marketing this to, but I had no idea. And I feel like nobody else had any idea. I feel like maybe three people have watched this movie. This movie starts off horribly because there isn't a cheer nightmare at the beginning. Every other Bring It On movie had a cheer nightmare to begin the movie. This movie for some reason decided to throw that away. Like maybe they were thinking, okay, let's be, original, like let's throw away the old formula, but we need, we need the intro to be a cheer nightmare sequence ending in the main character being woken up from either flashing the crowd, sharding, or puking. Do you understand? None of that happened, so already I hate this movie F. We can stop watching it now. Just kidding, I ended up watching the rest of it. Since this movie came out in 2017, the main character is an influencer, obviously. A smile. No, I have over a million IG followers. I'm gonna post this to show them Neanderthals still exist. Hashtag get a life, hashtag grow up, hashtag humiliated. She has great insults. You see, in the real world, we handle our battles on social media. So get ready to use up all your data because my plan's unlimited. Oh! Jade left and right. I'm confused because this movie came out in 2017. Why isn't Victoria Justice starring in it? Like no hate to this main character girl, but like Victoria Justice. Since we're in 2017, there's also a lot of hashtag talk. Hashtag tear crush, hashtag. I'd hit that. Ew, hashtag disgusting, but hashtag fight. I remember that stage where every like teen show or teen movie, like they always had characters talking in hashtags. Wait, are you asking me to the hashtag prom? Because if so, hashtag no. <laughs> like that's definitely a line that's in a script that's aired somewhere sometime around 2017. By the end of the movie, the main character ends up giving this emotional speech about how being an influencer doesn't matter, followers don't matter. Life's not about how many likes or followers you have. It's about how many friends are willing to stand by you, side you, catch you in a cradle. Okay, whoa. For some reason, two characters are swapping gum through a kiss. Thanks for the gum. 
Stop. At the end of the movie, the influencer girl ends up winning the cheer competition, which I was surprised by. I thought for sure she was going to lose. And that would further solidify her being like, you guys, winning doesn't matter. Like, likes don't matter. Followers don't matter. Like, all that matters is family. But she actually ends up winning the competition. And then she realizes, oh, yeah, winning followers, money, fame, and drugs are what matters in life. So she ends up having a little bit of a shift at the end. During the credits, no pop star is lip syncing like the other movies. So for that, F. Solid F. There weren't other follow-ups immediately. We had to wait another half a decade until 2022 for the next installment. Bring it on, cheer or die. It's a scary movie version. And it actually isn't straight to DVD. It debuted on a TV channel called Sci-Fi. I don't know why. I always thought the Sci-Fi channel had the demographic of like 50 year old men. So I don't know why that's the place where the Bring It On movie premiered, but we'll move on. Um, this movie also didn't start with a dream sequence nightmare. They've completely ditched that from the Bring It On franchise apparently. Just like the previous Bring It On movie, no offense to the cast of this movie, but why isn't it Jojo Siwa. This movie came out in 2022. There were so many options. Addison Rae. Why wasn't the Gabby show in this? Like there were so many options and casting didn't do it right. Let me cast the next Bring It On movie, okay? I'll get the cast stacked. We'll have Blippi in it, Joe Biden, and Mr. Beast. The movie shows that 20 years prior, a cheerleader was pushed off the top of a pyramid to her death on purpose by the other cheerleaders. When I was watching this, I freaked out because I was like, oh my God, the big she girl from the parent trap is in this? Turns out this isn't her. What? That is some Katy Perry, Zoe Deschanel stuff. The cheerleading squad in this movie decides to hang out in an abandoned school during Halloween weekend. So obviously they're all gonna die one by one. That's actually exactly what happens. Someone dies by getting caught in a bear trap and then a furry kills them. Very 2022, I gotta say, having a furry be the murderer. I love. The furry ends up killing more people. There's a lesbian romance thing. And then we find find out the girl who apparently wasn't in the parent trap, her twin was the one who got killed at the beginning of the movie 20 years earlier. So she trained her kids to kill cheerleaders and that's who's dressed up in the furry costumes, killing everyone. Are you following? Luckily, the main character girl starts fighting back to the killers while Confident by Demi Lovato is playing. If I'm ever in a situation where I have to be the hero and like defeat killers, that song better be playing. Like if I'm in a bank and people come in and are like, put your hands up everyone. Like obviously I am gonna be the hero in that situation and like tackle them and rescue everyone. But before I do that, I'm gonna go to my phone and ask Siri to play Confident by Demi Lovato. Cause it would just enhance the whole experience for everyone. They end up using cheer moves to escape the killers. And then it randomly ends with a cheer performance. So we know this is a bring it on movie because before that there wasn't any cheer performances really. And the scary mom is in the audience during the performance to kind of hint at a sequel like oh no the bad guy is still there which I'm very confused by because why didn't the cheer squad report her to the police and like she's just still there free even though they know that she trained her daughters to kill them maybe I wasn't paying attention close enough this didn't even feel like a bring it on movie F minus Sorry, I'm sorry. Also, again, why wasn't Jojo Siwa in this? Do better. That's the final installment to the Bring It On franchise. And I was Googling what's in store for the Bring It On universe. And it turns out Gabrielle Union herself, Nebraska royalty, has claimed that there are talks for an official theatrical movie sequel to Bring It On, which I was excited when I read, but then I was thinking, <sighs> Maybe we should just leave it, you know? It's been 25 years. Like, where is the story even gonna be? Like them doing an adult cheerleading squad or it's gonna be about their kids being in a cheerleading squad? I can't. That is the worst. When they bring back a show from 20 years ago and then it's all about the kids of those people. Like when they were like, that's so Raven's coming back and everyone was like, oh my God, yay. But then it's just about Raven's kids. Ew. Cancel the show immediately. Well, that was my deep dive into the Bring It On cinematic universe. Thank you for coming along. If if we learned anything from this video, sequels always ruin everything. But I am happy they exist. All right, well, don't forget to subscribe. I'm gonna go meet up with my adult cheerleading squad. We have practice, so got a dash. See ya.